Hello and welcome to the Reapers. So we tried to do a mission today and it was a good mission but it didn't go down very well as happened so we're going to do some training. Uh, Wolf will be leading us so stand by for that. Okay, I'm going to put down some targets. They will be blue. You will not shoot until you are given the order to fire. Okay, fire one round into the center mass of the target. Fire. Okay, good. Now fire three rounds into the center mass of the target. Oh, trash missed. Oh, no, he didn't. Okay, not sure what happened there, but good enough. These guys are bad guys. Kill them. Hold fire. Okay, everybody, stand up. Fire two rounds into the center mass of the target. know how the stance system works. What up? What you are going to do is you're going to hold the control CTRL button while pushing the W and S to find different stances. Control W moves your stance up, control S moves your stance down. You can also step to the left and to the right by pressing CTRL and A and D keys. Ah. It is also possible to lean by pushing the Q and E keys. Try it now. There is also a stabilization system implemented with the, up the marksman update of Arma 3. Please return to your station. Aim downrange. Push X-ray to crouch, then you're going to push C. That will mount your weapon onto the sandbag, creating a stabilized platform. If you have a bipod, the bipod will deploy. Try shooting the target in full auto with your weapon stabilized. Go ahead. How do I Please make mark? it go full auto? Cease fire. Foxtrot. Cease fire. When you do a stance and you do like a stand up and you can go like even more stood up, what does that achieve? It like is good peaking. for shooting over the top of the walls. Copy that, so like peeking and stuff. But you do get like an aim uh, debuff, I suppose. Yes, anything that is not directly on the center line or the center lock axis of your body um, receives an immediate debuff of I think 5 to 10%. Um, that's just to, just to simulate the fact that the further away the point of recoil is from your body, the less ability, to, the, the less, the, the harder it will be to handle the firearm. Alright, you all know the posing system, how to mount your weapons, different fire modes, do you know when to use the different fire modes? Yeah, single basically forever unless someone is like two feet in front of you. Incorrect. <laughs> What you want to do is you want to put the most effective amount of lead in the highest volume you can downrange. This is called a violence of action. You want the violence of action, the amount of lead, to be proportional to the accuracy of action. So, targets right here, go ahead and go full auto on them. You can just mow them right down. Targets. Targets over here, for instance. You'll have a harder time hitting with full auto. It can be done, but that's much better for suppression. Ceasefire? Ceasefire. New question, how do I put earplugs in? Ace interaction. Uh, yeah, I probably should go on over that. Okay, everybody, you should have an arsenal box next to you. Cool. I want you to click the Windows key. That should be the standard Ace interaction menu. That is for external objects. If you click Control, CTRL, and the Windows key, you should bring up the self-interaction menu. It will be a radial with uh, gestures, medical, 7 o'clock position, 7 to 8 o'clock position, where it says equipment. And then you will see something that says earplugs. And I want you to release the Control and Windows key over that, and you will put your earplugs in. Sorry, what was that? I my earplugs in. This is great for other things, such as there's something called an entrenching tool. You can literally build fortifications right in the field with it. It's awesome. Um, you can also use this menu to interact with others, interact with yourself, with gestures like Atomic just did. Um, you can use it to pick up grenades that are thrown at you. Um, you can use it to do many things that you otherwise could not. Um, the next topic um, I would be going over, which is when you should be talking in your radio, 
question when you should be talking like this, like I am talking right now. Notice you cannot hear me on the radio. Why? Because I'm not talking on the radio. Now, when should you talk on the radio and when you should talk like this in local chat? Well, the radio has many advantages. It is um, almost always of the same loudness, but it's amplified on the radio because everybody can hear everyone in spite of range. So, usually what we do is we limit the radio to very important messages, okay? So, anything that is extremely important, like enemy contact, or or commands are given over the radio, and anything that is not important, like something specific to someone, to someone like if I am assigned to a team, my team is Slicey, Senora, and Tony, and um, the other team already knows what we're gonna do, but I say, oh, Senora, you're gonna hold this specific spot. That is not something that the other team needs to know, thus, I will say it on my local chat, instead of radio, because they don't need to hear it, and if they do, it's just clutter and it's useless information. Now, for all of your private chats and anything you want to say to each other, don't use the radio. It clutters it up, and it's just useless information. The radio is only, only for important messages. And when you're talking on the radio, I will shoot you, Slicey, please stop. You need to be short, and concise. So, for instance, when you're giving a... When, when you're saying anything on the radio, think first. Think. What are you going to say exactly? Phrase it out and then say it. And, uh, for example, if you're giving a contact, uh, a contact re report, you would say... Um, you wouldn't say, uh, I see, like, three guys maybe bearing, hold on, let me check, zero to zero, and they have two AKs, one with a grenade launcher, and they're wearing, uh, this and this uniform. No. That is a bad contact report. How a good contact report would be is short and concise. Enemy squad bearing zero to zero. That's it. If you don't be so kind as to get into Mr. Gregory's truck. Tony and Slissy. And Kirk. Yeah, sorry, I was dealing with a guy in Discord. Yeah, I think dealing very badly. Shut up, I'm... You would be salty as well if you were in my situation, okay? Yeah, but you don't maybe. be rude to new people who are just asking a question. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Salty is, uh, you know, not everybody. Well, I mean, salty. you could have said something, but, well, you didn't, so... It's well, okay, I wasn't I in Discord. <laughs> okay, is everybody in? Shut up. Roger that. Fresh up. I hear you fucking bickering from ten feet in the air. Um, go into your uh, settings and then audio and you can turn it down. I don't care, you should still follow the rules. I'd advise you put your earplugs in for this. Everybody ears, be aware of shrapnel. NATO. Cease, cease, cease. Thank you very much. Do you gentlemen see the red arrow? Of all the World War II video Copy. games. Right. Hey, right. <laughs> fun. He threw the grenade here. Roger. The kill radius of that grenade extended out to the other red arrow. Wow. Little pieces of shrapnel. Kirk, what grenade did you throw? Standard M67. So you know what? Throw a Russian one. In Soviet Russia, grenade throws you. Igor, let me throw you. I know. That was a good one. You have any you hear that grenade at this red arrow here, and it hit everything here. I even when you're throwing grenades, be aware of shrapnel and blast damage. So OP. Okay, Kirk, are you done? Do you feel confident using grenades? OP is fuck, dude. Yes. 
Hold on, let me show them an RT and an AT and A first. Is that AT as in anti tank? Yeah. Fire in the hole. I would uh, get down. This grenade will not destroy a tank, but it could give you enough of a chance that it, it's damaged. It could take out a truck, maybe the engine. Uh, it'll give you a chance to kill it. Okay, senor. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, grab a couple of nits, and uh, have fun. Okay. No, that is how it works. The prefer uh, specific distances are altered oh, by you know, breaking it up and down. Well done. That was a sexy grenade. These grenades have shrapnel. And shrapnel is actually the exact same as bullets. You get hit by shrapnel, it's the exact same as getting shot. Hey, Cap, okay, Cap, go ahead. Uh, give me one moment to clear the range from this bullshit. Uh, just be aware that the G key is grenade, so uh, go ahead and toss a uh, grenade out right now. Remember to get down and cover your head. Fire in the hole. Well done. Uh, one more thing, each term is frag out. Copy it. Yeah, well done. Fire in the hole really well done. How do I change the range? You threw a standard grenade. That is, that's just the basic vanilla armor grenade. What you're going to do is you're going to push Shift and G now to enter a state called Advanced Throwing. The grenade that you have selected will show up in front of you, and you will get several options. Uh, left click to throw. You will click the middle mouse button to prime the grenade, so you release the spoon and cook it, and right click to cancel. You can also cycle the mouse wheel up and down to adjust the range. Do so now. Roger. Uh, understood. Go ahead and try it. And don't cook a frag. Get um. down, get down, get down. Scary, get down. Okay, that was way too close. Hmm. Just so you guys know, cooking a frag is a very, very bad idea. That I was, was picking one up. That was too close, yeah? I want you to hit this man. Roger. Get ready and... Frag out. Damn it! Down, 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 get down. Down, get down, get down! That was even closer to us. Whatever I... Okay, that was the so close cap, range throw, that cap, was my bad, try, Cap. Try scrolling the wheel down. Cap, frag out. It's still low, almost, get down. Almost, Stand by. Cap, frag out. Yeah. Like, you'll, you'll see when the, when the, the dots go into the, that was into good. the nest. Ah, the that dots go into the nest, right, now I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Stand by. Yeah. Okay. Cap. Frag well, out. You should get it. Oh, good throw. Down. Almost. Almost, dude. Was that short? Oh, I thought yep. that went in. I think it was short a little bit. That was short. Stand by. A little bit short. Try aiming for the guy on the left. He's a little closer. Cap. You should have an easier time with this guy. Cap. Frag out. Right in good. the pit. Good fucking work. Roger, out. Cap can yeah, throw grenades. Absolutely. Let's crack on, guys. Let's get these grenades going. Frag out. Frag out. Okay, it's irrelevant now, anyway. It's fine. Frag out. No, no, no. What's wrong? Here. No, just whisper it to me. Uh, I was going to throw one and see if they take off. Then I shall. It's irrelevant. Um, yes. Frag out. Frag out. Frag out. I'm gonna give these Frag out. Jeez. Frag out. Try to do some long range one, boys. Okay, uh, go ahead and hold fire for one moment. There's something wrong with one of the targets. Yep. Is there ammo around there? Frag out, take cover! Down, down. Safe. Alright, fucking excellent. That was scripted. That was a scripted event. I told Kirk to do that. Uh, you all did absolutely wonderful. Oh, you cover immediately. I don't think any further training is needed. Atomic's dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, Atomic kind of crawled out. In, he, he took over too early and he needed to crawl out of the open, but it was close enough. When I said no further training was needed, that he had stopped throwing grenades. Oh my god. Hold. Shape up, men. Get around cap fast. Shape up. Get around cap fast. Quick point here. Please listen to me. Um, yes, for the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? God damn it. Terminology. 
of grenades. Grenade is when somebody has thrown a grenade at you. Okay? When you are throwing a grenade, you'd say frag out. Copy. Okay. Good. Let's do explosives first because it's quick and then medical. Go fast. Okay, okay. pay attention. Yeah, okay, Kirk just put down a, uh, a bomb. This is the standard Arma 3 vanilla way of doing it. After he puts down this bomb, there is no further way to interact with it. Um, also, everybody get down. This? Woo. Yeah. Okay, what Kirk's doing right now is he's checking the, uh, he's doing the ace interaction menu. Um, as he does this, he'll be able to move and place the explosive on certain objects, like that sandbag bunker directly in front of him. Yeah, just go ahead and put it right on top. There you go. See? He dropped it right in front. And with this way of doing things, what he has to do then is uh, open the ace uh, interaction menu right over top of it and uh, attach a detonator to it, which you will then either attach a timer to or have on a clacker on a certain frequency. This is very good for well destroying buildings. Everybody get down, lock on Tony. Fire in the hole, fire in the hole. Yep, you'll use you, you say fire in the hole three times. Well did. Holy shit, well you actually killed three of the targets. And you notice that was much stronger than the vanilla one. Yep, go ahead and throw a claymore down. Good done, well work. Now these are directional. Yes, claymores are directional. Uh, the, um, yeah, so you can either attach it as a, uh, there is one claymore you can attach as a tripwire. Uh, with the standard RHS and R uh, ace claymores, you have to use a clacker. Let me put some civilians down. Clacker? Uh, yeah, clocker, it's a slang term for a for the detonator, uh, detonating right? device. Yeah. Notice how far it goes. Go ahead and hit it. Find the hole, find the hole, find the hole. <laughs> Shit. So it damaged beautiful. a couple of them, and actually this guy was, uh, he was just outside the, uh, the cone of fire. But it will fire BBs out in a cone, like a shotgun of retarded proportions. Ball drop. Right. It's a great, great weapon. And notice how far it hit. Yeah, which by the way, if you don't know, to the end of the runway is 19 meters. That is very impressive. Who wants to uh, be volunteer to get shot? I'll do it. I'll do it. No, you both need to learn how to do medical. Do it. Someone okay. who already knows medical will get shot. Knows medical, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to injure Kirk. I want you guys with no medical knowledge to help him. Alright, I'll do it. Kirk has been injured. Fix him. Oh no, oh. he's gotten another wound. Understood. Yeah, his right arm. His uh, right. just take note guys, it's not control windows, it's just windows on its own when you're doing someone yeah. else. Yeah, yeah exactly. The external interaction menu. Roger. On the right arm, we need to tourniquet his arm because he's bleeding, so I'm gonna do that. Roger, caps on the torso, fill dressing. If he's got can, no heart rate. If you can bandage his arm, uh, you don't need to tourniquet. Be advised that if you have a tourniquet on for longer than five minutes, it will cause pain. Okay, yeah. so when I'm putting the bandage on, then I take the tourniquet off after. Yes. Um, real quick, has anyone checked his heart rate or blood pressure? I did. And, and they what were, was it? Uh, the one, in his left arm, he didn't have one, uh, a pulse, but he had low blood pressure. Okay. But I think that Here's might be because of the tourniquet. Giving him some morphine. You fucking killed him with morphine. Let's ignore it, for <laughs> fuck's sake. Okay, 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 okay. He's got morphine. no heart rate. Morphine? And you were so slow that I bled out. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just explaining that. I'm performing CPR on Curse. He's oh dead. God, he's back. Find, he's dead. Find a normal heart rate. <laughs> Can't do any. He's dead. He's Roger. Dead. He's dead. Let it go, man. Let it go. Right. Roger, okay. Roger. We better burn him so he doesn't come back as a zombie. In your eyes, what went wrong? They did not do anything fast enough. Okay. Did we do the Number right thing, things? Here, here, here should, for all medics, here should be the exact thing that goes through your head. What is my patient's heart rate and blood pressure? The heart rate the should be... First. Are you guys fucking sick? Tony, seriously. 
What's the heart rate and the blood pressure? I'm listening. So, Chad, this is the biggest problem I found with the mission. Apart from Tony and Sly, no one else could do any useful healing, so this is, like, really important. Yep. Roger. Medical setting, me like, teaching medical will take the longest amount of time. Basically, all you need to know is, look, look at Kurt here. I'm going to make all of you uh, medical. Right, investigate him. Call out the problems. There's no problems yet. I'm going to check his blood pressure. Where did you okay. find the blood pressure? Do you all do you all see numbers popping up when you check his blood pressure and heart rate? Yeah, 120 yeah. over 80. This, right now, you are looking at a reasonably healthy man. As of right now, his heart rate and his blood pressure are all directly within normal parameters. Remember this. Heart rate normal is between, like the, is, is around the numbers here. High is above, low is below. Low is below 80. Low is when you're in danger of, 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 of cardiac arrest. It's higher than, what is it, Kirk? 180 and lower than 80? I or don't remember. Was it 120, I think? Uh, yeah, uh, higher than 120 and lower than 80. Um, right. Both of those uh, risk going into uh, cardiac arrest. Cap doesn't know how to look, read the pulse, find the pulse and the blood pressure. Okay. On the head. you got to do it on the head. Well, Rod, blood pressure. stand by. No, you don't. Let me do, do that again. You do it on Actually, the arms. I, I guess you can do it on the arms too, yeah. Does everybody, everybody, everybody know everybody find pulse and blood pressure? Normal blood pressure. Copy. Fresh, a firm. Cap's found it. Okay, awesome. So, imagine for a second he is injured. Okay? First thing you always do, check pulse and blood pressure. If he is, if he's, if he's awake and responsive, okay, those become second priority. The first priority should always be the health of the patient. If he is unconscious, check his blood pressure and his pulse. Okay. If he has no pulse but blood pressure, he is alive. If he has no pulse and no blood pressure, he is fully dead. If he has no pulse and blood pressure, his heart has stopped, but he is alive. If he has oh. blood pressure and pulse, he is alive and waiting to be revived. If he has no pulse and no blood pressure, he is dead. In this situation, is if you pass a guy that is wounded, make sure the immediate area is safe, okay? Take a quick read of his blood pressure and his pulse. Okay, come out of the medical menu, make sure it's still safe. Come back in, tourniquet everything that's needed, radio him in, continue on, okay? If you, if you are behind the main line, you can sit there, you can go ahead and then fix up your buddy, do not ever sacrifice the mission for a single man. How do you track a man out or put him on the back? Ace what you are going to do is you are going to wait until somebody is unconscious and then you will use the external ACE interaction menu, hover over him around his waist or his buttocks, and then you will see a bunch of options pop up. Buttocks. You will select, you will hover over either select or drag and um, release the key. Um, dragging is better for short distances, uh, j directly out of a firefight. So if you're crossing a street, you go down, drop some smoke, bring your buddy back. Okay, Kirk is now unconscious. You should see that menu. I'll drop. You know, blank actions. Well okay, done. Now, awesome. now Tony must up. have found it because he's picking him up. Yes. Please don't run away with my Kirk. Human sacrifice. Okay. No, All right, so how'd I put him down now? Send him back down, guys. Let's move on efficiently. Okay, awesome. Oh, yes, kinds of bandages. Please explain them to them. So there are multiple different kinds of wounds. There are abrasions, avulsions, contusions, crushes, cuts, lacerations, velocity wounds, and puncture wounds. Each of these have minor, medium, and large categories. You also have different kinds of dressings. Field dressings, packings, elastic bandages, and quick clot. So... Uh, what you want to do is you want to have uh, a good amount of field dressings, a good amount of, of, of quick plot bandages, some packing, and some elastic. You want to have a few bandages of every different kind, just because that's how it works. So with field dressing, we'll take a uh, uh, velocity one. Those are some of the most you're going to come in contact with. So you're going to see an efficiency number. So the math is uh, n is greater than 0 0.9 for a positive uh, for the if uh, for the efficiency, and the reopening chance is the best is n is uh, less than 0 0.2. Uh, sorry, yeah, 0. Point, yeah, 0 0.2. So the efficiency you need. So for uh, a cut, for instance, a minor cut, a field dressing as a four. So you will heal 
four minor cuts with one field dressing. A large cut is uh, one, a laceration is 0 0.5. Um, so you're going to need a fair few of these because the reopening chance in these is not too bad. These are going to be your primary dressing. They don't weigh a lot and they're great. Um, packing bandages, they heal very well, uh, but the reopening chance is uh, almost one across the board, except on contusions, because contusions are just bruises. Um, so the packing bandages has a little bit more efficiency, or, well, a little bit more or roughly the same efficiency as a field dressing, um, but a higher reopening chance. Actually, I'm going to do a couple of tests. I don't know which weighs more. Um, the elastic bandages are... It doesn't matter. They weigh nothing. They weigh, the packing bandages weigh nothing? All of them weigh next to nothing. Okay, guys, come on. Okay. Well, all right, fine. So the elastic bandages are great for uh, closing up wounds. So you see efficiency 4, 3, 2.5, 2, 5, 5, 5, 3, 5. Like, really great numbers, but if you look at the reopening chance, everything is greater. There is no number that is greater than, z or uh, less than 0 0.6. Um, these uh, these will open. Like, it's, it's guaranteed. Um, these are great for a uh, quick patch if you uh, need these to... to like, these are great if you want to put these on and then do a better bandage later on, or a surgical kit or whatever. These are great. Um, usually only medics should carry these. Uh, regular soldiers should have no more than 10. Uh, quick Clot is the best. Um, the efficiency is not too good, but the reopening chance is very, very, very low. Uh, quick Clot is great in the field. If you want to have a uh, longer patrol, or if you're farther away from a medical station, or if your medic uh, can't get to you in time, use a Quick Clot. It will save your life. That's all for the bandage discussion. Lovely. Now, morphine will lower the blood pressure. Epinephrine will wait, raise the blood pressure. Um, heart rate. Heart rate. Heart rate. Heart, yes, yes, I am so sorry. Heart rate. Uh, is it adenosine that lowers, lowers or raises? Doesn't matter because you never know, you, you're never going to need it. Yeah, okay, true. Um, okay, so you need to carry a minimum of four uh, morphine auto-injectors and a minimum of two epinephrine auto-injectors. If, if the patient's heart rate is too low, if the patient's heart rate says low or is under 80, do not use morphine. You will kill them. Um, epinephrine, if the patient's heart rate is high or above 120 or 140, do not use it. You will kill them. Um, morphine and epinephrine should be given together in pairs if the person has an average blood pressure. Um, this is to uh, lower the pain or, or suppress the pain with morphine and then raise the heart rate with epinephrine. Any questions yeah. about that so far? Well, I've got a few comments. Um, me personally, I find that if you only use one morphine, uh, you don't need to put an EpiPen after it because the heart rate will just naturally go up after that over a period of time. But if you're giving someone their second morphine, definitely do so. Also, epinephrine is used to start the heart back up. That is a good point. It's basically, yes. if you don't know, Epinephrine is basically giving a shot of adrenaline to someone. Right. Well, yeah, epinephrine is a derivative of adrenaline. If a person has no right, heart right. rate, give them CPR and as much epinephrine as they can hold. Yes, and Fire in right. the real world, yes, by the way, in the real world, in the real world, epinephrine is also known as EpiPen, which you might have heard yeah. of. See, in the middle there will be a mannequin body. It, it says there is a body, white is not injured, red is bleeding, blue is bandaged. Okay? Straight below that, there will be a word with a color. That is a triage card. It's not very important. It can be non, minor, delayed, immediate, and deceased. It doesn't really matter. Ignore it. Okay? That is the status panel. To the left will be the examine and treatment panel. We'll come to that later. To the right will be the overview panel. We will... Okay, actually, we'll do that now. So, you see, in the overview panel, there are two things right now. The body part selected and the status of that body part. If you click around in the mannequin, you will see different things like torso, right arm, right leg, head, pop up. And no injuries on this body part. Okay, if there are injuries, it will show them here. Okay, good. Next up, quick view. Uh, to the bottom right will be um, who has checked heart rate and when and what the heart rate is and uh, blood pressure response and heart rate will be here. To the left, bottom left will be activity log which will show when who and what so things like 
um, Tony Z has bandaged patients, so um, you can figure out how many morphines they've got in them by that. For instance, stop moving my triage card to immediate. Okay, now, I was just testing it out. Top left, examine and treatment. This is how you treat. You can view the triage card, examine the patient, which is tech pulse and blood pressure, bandage yeah. slash factors, which is how you apply bandages, medication, which is how you apply morphine and epinephrine, airway management, which is useless, advanced treatment, which is how you apply pack, drag slash carry, which is how you drag or carry, and toggle self, which is how you if you press that, you will toggle between your own medical menu and the medical menu of the man you were next to. That's about it. Roger that. Last thing, promise, like 10 seconds. This is usually only used for doctors. Um, you will receive a surgical kit, uh, or you need to take a surgical kit as part of your loadout. Um, after you do that, you can move up to a soldier and you, will, you can stitch bandaged wounds. This is the only way, other than a PAC, to uh, to uh, heal a soldier's bet your fucking head, I can't hold on. It is the only way to heal a soldier who has been wounded and is bandaged, right. other than a pack. Yeah, but only medics can use it. Okay. Okay, let me clean this up and then we'll go to AT. For some explanation, armor is strongest in the front, weakest on the rear, intermediate on the sides, super weak on the top, and very susceptible to landmines. See, there are differences between IFVs, F uh, IFVs, uh, APCs. And uh, tanks. IFVs are infantry fighting vehicles. They can hold a small amount of infantry, have a large cannon on top, and multiple other uh, ways of engaging you. APCs are armored personnel carriers. They generally have smaller kinds of weapons and carry a large amount of troops. Tanks are big fucking things that fucking fuck you up. Uh, tanks are the hardest to kill. Uh, APCs and IFVs are tied for the easiest. APCs slightly more so, simply because of their thinner armor. Um, after you hit a tank and it explodes, run the fuck away because you will get hit by its secondaries. Secondaries are explosions that are caused by ammunition and fuel inside of the vehicles cooking off after it has been hit. Any questions so far? Nope. Great. I'll go ahead. Go ahead, Kurt. Right. I will now get my launcher out and I will load it using the R key. As you can see, my launcher is now loaded and the sights are flipped up. I can range my launcher using the page up and page down keys. I can range a launcher on launchers that have the ability to. I'm using the AT4, which is a great one that can. Uh, this goes from 50 in 50 meter intervals, uh, increments to 400. Uh, now, I will back the fuck away. And my launcher is loaded. I will aim at the connection at the top of the hull, uh, slightly under the turret. Clear back blast, which is a um, very important thing to do since After when a rocket. You, Kirk, oh, break. Yeah. Break. When you say clear back blast, you are to look over your shoulder. If you do not see anyone in your immediate vicinity, you are clear. If they then, it is then their responsibility to maintain the clearance behind your launcher. Yes, just to explain a bit, back blast is a very dangerous thing. Basically, when you fire a rocket forward, uh, have you noticed that firing rocket launchers, there is no recoil? Do you know why that is? Well, I will tell you. The when the rocket goes forwards, all of the exhaust gases propelling the rockets forward go straight out of the back of the launcher. Okay? Now, those can kill you very, very easily, especially if you're in a confined room and they bounce from the walls. It's a very big shockwave, Steve, no and it's pretty Come much... It's, it's ultrasonic. It's it's like being hit by a fucking cyclone. Signore, so stand behind someone who is firing a rocket Signore, rocket. stand now, behind Kirk. And stay there. Continue. After the rocket is fired, go look at the medical menu. I was order. ordered to go here. I was ordered to go here. You stay there, Signore. No, Kirk, Kirk is going to turn his face and chest into hamburger. Three, two, one. <laughs> Everybody come over and look at the medical menu. And please notice that I am now also wounded because the shockwave bounced off of him and came back to me. Oh, wow. That's very... Ooh, and also the rounds or something is exploding in that tank. Tony has arm, uh, sorry, uh, Signore has arm and leg damage, or he did. Okay, everyone's been healed. Notice how the- oh, fuck, I wish that would stop. Okay. Notice Heal how the side armor was weak enough to be penetrated by an AT-4, but not by a law. The, the rear armor would be penetrated by a law, 
the front armor might be penetrated by an AT4. Here's the difference. Armor, thickness, and slope is taken into account. Uh, the AT4 has three variants. HP, high power, uh, the most penetration. Heat, which is very useful against uh, most vehicles other than the most heavily armored main battle tanks. And HEDP, high explosive dual purpose, which is more useful against jeeps and that sort. Okay? Because it is more like a squash head for you Brits out there. Roger. Uh, the M72 Law is a smaller caliber and it is only in heat. Uh, which is easily defeated by ERA, Explosive Reactive Army, commonly found on T-72s, T-80s and T-90s. Um, I will not go into that now. Um, and bigger, more heavier launchers have a multitude of different rounds that I will also not go into. Basically, right. when I say, you say, clear back blast, somebody replies, back blast clear. After you've checked, that means, go fire. Roger, Roger I just need so, to flip the side up. Good, so, so clear back clear blast. Back blast clear. Firing. Good shot. Good fucking shot. Cap. Yep, clear back blast. Back blast. Clear. Clear. Checked. Good shot. Uh, by the yeah, way, guys, notice, just so you know, notice back real blast. Quick, notice how the law didn't kill it. Yes. Uh, by the way, guys, just so you know, back blast is about a 40 degree cone in each ang in each uh, direction. Roger. The back. Go go go. Roger. So don't be like. Back blast clear. Off at an angle. Yeah, just just stand to his side completely and Last guy. preferably far away. Thank you, everyone. Um, we've done really well. Um, hopefully, we've learned a lot. We've learned. I think medical was the main thing. I think most of us knew AT and stuff, but medical was really good. Uh, I've also got, um, we'll make a little movie about it as well, so that we can um, you know refer to it and for new guys. So good job. We'll turn it into standard procedure. Right. Um, I think we're all a bit stressed out today, so let's finish off with a light um, note. Everyone, grab one of these boxes and grab as many grenades as you can carry. Uh, right, uh, Signore, run three zero zero for four hundred feet. Go now. Me? Yep. No rifle. No rifles. Go, go, go. So today we're going to be we're going to be playing bomb the Signore. We're going to be using our grenades to try and kill him, and he's going to run and dodge. No shooting rifles. No shooting AT. Nothing stupid. Um, keep going. Keep go, go, keep go. going. Keep going. Keep going. This is fucked up. Frag out. Yeah, you don't pay me enough for this shit. Ah! We don't pay you at all. <laughs> How are you alive? You guys are. You guys can't throw for shit. Now zigzag left and right, signore. So I'm gonna take you down. No. Serpentine artillery. <laughs> hey guys, Frag out, cap. You can bomb us if you want to, Nora, as well. Cap frag out. I tried. Yes! Oh, you mothers. Alright, 